Olecranon bursitis. This is the most common type of superficial bursitis. If you watch my video on prepatellar bursitis, then you probably have a general idea about what is going on. This type of bursitis is also common in those that put pressure on their elbows repeatedly or take big falls like grapplers or other combat sports athletes. But it can happen to just about anyone who rests their arms on their elbows or accidentally hits their elbows on things. First, talk about the anatomy. To review, a bursa is a fluid filled sac that provides cushion and reduces friction between tissues that have to move past each other in our bodies. We have many bursae located throughout our bodies and they are located in areas where our bodies move the most, around the joints. The olecranon bursa is in a very superficial position right underneath the skin and over the elbow bone called the olecranon, which is really hard. You can imagine how this area could get injured. This bursa is not really noticed until it is. It can look pretty ugly. So the symptoms, what does this feel like? There will be a big bump over the tip of the elbow. Often it is not tender, but certainly can be. Usually elbow range of motion is not very limited until the bursa starts getting compressed when the elbow is bent all the way. If there's a lot of pain and or warmth, one should suspect an infection. Sometimes there is redness as well. It can be difficult to differentiate between a bursitis with an infection or just inflammation. Sometimes a doctor may determine that sucking the fluid out is the right thing to do, especially if they are trying to determine if it is an infection. So what causes this? Usually it's a series of smaller events that cause shearing on the area, but it can be caused by a single traumatic event. Small bone spurs on the olecranon are associated with the development of olecranon bursitis, and it's something you can see on x-ray. It can also be caused by infection or other inflammatory conditions. With olecranon bursitis, at least two thirds of the time, it is not an infection. So how do we treat these? The mainstays of treatment are rest, compression, padding, and anti-inflammatory medications. One must do their best to eliminate the underlying cause of the issue. Personally, I'm a fan of these volleyball sleeves for treatment. If these things are not working, or if there is a high suspicion of infection, sucking the fluid out with a needle may be the way to go. However, just like with prepartylar bursitis, I am personally very hesitant to stick needles into these superficial bursa, as this can result in bigger issues which will be talked about in a moment. Some research has shown no difference between simple compression versus taking the fluid out or aspirating it in time to get better. Research also shows that injecting corticosteroids can speed things up by only a few days, but the injection of steroids can also create issues. Complications from steroid injections are rare, but include triceps tendon rupture and surrounding tissues to atrophy or waste away. But some physicians will offer them and physicians should be the only ones providing them. Often it takes weeks to months for symptoms to fully resolve. If there's an infection, antibiotics will be necessary. Oral antibiotics can do a good job, but sometimes IV antibiotics are necessary. Only if antibiotics are not working or are not going to work, this should be determined by a professional, is surgery an option? The bursa is cut out through either a large incision or smaller incisions. Endoscopic or with a little scope, treatments are being used as well. Also, if there is a spur at the olecranon contributing to this, it may be shaved down. Potential complications of treatment are real. Needles going in and out of the bursa may introduce an infection. Corticosteroids reduce your body's ability to fight infection, 
So that is another reason why I would be hesitant to give those. Also, an actual tract that communicates the bursa to the outside world, called the sinus tract, can form. If this does happen, it can be a huge problem in that it can result in infection and chronic drainage. There can be scarring, skin changes, pain, other wound issues, and requires even bigger surgeries to get things healed. Olecranon bursitis is very common. And in my humble opinion, the best course of treatment is rest, padding and compression, and anti-inflammatory medications. Sometimes antibiotics are necessary. The fewer needles that are stuck into the bursa, the better, and if done, should be done by a professional. Only very rarely is surgery necessary. If not careful, the treatment can be worse than the original problem. I'm Dr. Lucius Pomerantz, board certified orthopedic surgeon. If you find these videos informative, please don't forget to like and share and subscribe.